I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Titty Mun was last week. Yes. Right? Week before that was Wendigo, which was yep. really good. I, we peaked. Uh, Best one. We peaked. That's it. That's it. Uh, we're never going to be episode 68. Yeah, I really don't know how we're going to pull it off this episode. Uh I, I overdid it, quite frankly. Um, There's, it was pretty good. It was a lot of production. You put a lot of sound effects into that one. It was kind of weird, actually. A lot of time um, in post, not going to lie. Yeah, a lot of time. Uh, anywho, before the podcast, I discovered something called the Engram Viewer. And I sent it over to you, and we were looking at some words. So I was curious... Uh, and I searched a few things. So, like, uh, I think the first one I checked was, like, terrorism or terror because I was curious as if, like, you know, there was a spike in 2001 or anything like that. Um, but I wanted a funnier thing. So, I, uh, Brandon, I, I gave you a time range before the episode started. You did. Can I say the word? The word that I want you to look into. No, I want you to add a new word. A new word. A new word. Okay. But. But? 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 B-U-T-T-S. But. Okay, because before we were talking about metaphor, because you said. We were talking about metaphor. You said the word for. You said it's not a metaphor, it's for. And and I was like, is that a thing? No, Um, it wasn't. It it wasn't a thing because metaphor, as we found out before the episode, is its own root. uh Uh-huh. Basically. So, um, but. But, all right. I don't know what happened, Brandon. Am I keeping the same time range between 1900 and 2019? Yes. So Okay. There was a spike in butt talk in yes. 1911. Oh! Then another spike in 1940. Whoa! And I don't know what I happened. I just hit enter. Whoa! I, I don't know what happened in 2001. What? But butts is down to 0% now in books. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> what is this? This is the craziest chart I've ever seen. I, I, I thought, if anything, it would increase as a joke, right? Because, like, 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 that's a thing that people joke about these days. Like, they make butt jokes, and they say butts, ironically. That Apparently they don't anymore. If we're to believe this engram viewer, this is ridiculous. So if you're uh, it, the engram viewer picture, like across the bottom, it's a date range, and across the top, it's is the percentage use or frequency that a word's used, and it looks kind of like the, just the squiggly line of the stock markets. And then in two thousand, there's a straight line down until it hits <laughs> twenty fifteen, and it's just zero. Okay, it's just okay. zero. Brandon, Brandon, I, I don't know if the zero is something, uh, I don't know if the zero means anything, but the next word I want you to type is fuck. Uh-huh. This is a my new favorite game. Same date range? Same date range. Wait, before you hit enter, when do you think it will peak? Oh, okay. I, um, I'm going to say 2006. 17. I was just going over music in my head that had bad words in it. Okay, okay. Uh, hit enter on that. Uh, tw- oh, wait a 2001. minute. 2001. 2001. It's like a huge, sp- well, well, relatively speaking. So, percentage wise, we're talking in the less than a full percent. But, yeah. But, I mean, relativistically, like, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a spike. In. I can't, can I blow this chart up? Somewhere, my mouse isn't snapping to the exact perfect date range, but around 1955, there's yeah. a huge fuck spike that that happens, right? It goes from zero to... Oh, yeah, no, no. Uh, up until 2001, there's this massive fuck spike. And then, after 2001... People just stopped fucking. People just stopped fucking. 
That's crazy. <laughs> Especially all lowercase. All caps fuck. Never that popular. No. But lower all lowercase fuck. Huge spike. Wow. That's ridiculous. I'm trying to think of words that... So all the words that I can think of that would fall off in usage, I don't want to say on the podcast. Yeah. Um, 2001 is a crazy... I just typed in the word whoops and uh, another spike than heavy fall off. I wonder I wonder if that's a an artifact of... I think that's... The, I think this, that's an artifact of the data set. I, I think so as well, that big yeah, fall yeah. off. I think that's an artifact of the data set. Maybe they don't have as many samples post-2001. So, okay, okay. So this this is actually a good teaching experience for yeah. data sets. Uh, just because there's a spike somewhere doesn't mean anything yeah. if you don't know what the data underlying it actually is. No. Uh, one One more for one cromulent one. Uh-huh. I'm searching cryptid. Oh, we have different mindsets because I just typed in the word PP and uh, I set my date range from 1500 to 2019 and um, 1784, huge PP spike. A huge one? Huge one. It's all like flat, flat zeros up until uh, 1776 to 1785 massive pp spike then it drops all the way back down and then we see again our 2001 spike so i think there's just a big sample size in 2001 i think so i don't know bigfoot bigfoot also doesn't gain popularity until like 1960 huh uh chupa cabra we still have to do an episode on that it's just it takes time Oh, okay. So yeah, chupacabra is like a brand new phenomena. Huh. Very clearly, like if you if you look at this engram, yeah, thing, it literally the first instance of the word chupacabra is in like 1988 or 1987. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's it's like that's a fun. brand. That's like a brand new cryptid, but it's also like one of the most, uh, like for some reason it's very popular. Huh. Yeah, there, there's some weird idiosyncrasies about cryptozoology. Um, Mothman has a spike, uh, also appears pretty much on the timeline of the uh, Mothman events happened, and then the Mothman prophecies released. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What other what other cryptids can we look up and see how the they've trended over the years? I don't know, Sasquatch, another... 1962 there's a is when it starts really picking up this is kind well, yeah. of fun and interesting well it's interesting because if you look at this data so um and this is actually like a really important thing when it comes to what we do on this podcast like if you're looking like and of course the data set is limited to what has been scanned into the data set we have to preface that but it's still a way of seeing when something entered the zeitgeist. Yeah, that's that's basically so. Like, like you know, it's less useful for prepositional phrases and you know adverbs and stuff like that. But like proper nouns, it's more valuable, right? Yeah. Um, like alien. Let's see how I when... just typed in that. It's pretty. It's pretty flat. And then we see that well, two thousand one yeah. to twenty fifteen kind of weird. Drop yeah. So off. I think I think the two thousand one. I think 2001 is a, a aberration of the data set. Actually, let yeah. me let me take smoothing down to zero, and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So 2008, they law they they. If you set smoothing to zero, Brandon, you oh, can see yeah. more accurately that the data set just completely drops off. So yeah. So, so <laughs> the core the core humor of this is lost as a result. Smoothing 50? What does that look like? Oh, it's basically worthless. Cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, an n-gram, I think, is a unit of... Uh, like in computu- It's like a computational linguistics thing. Yeah. Uh, they have no, sing- no data uh, between 1900 and 2019 for 
the queen is a lizard. Well, that's not an engram. I you know. I just wanted to see what would happen. Let me play well, actually, with my chart. That's a the queen is a lizard. That's a five a five gram sequence. Yeah. Because each indiv- and each individual word is a gram. Because uh-huh. it's a continuous sing- it's a contiguous sequence of n items given a sample of text or speech. And I th- think I think we might be hitting Big O. Uh, problems with a search that big yeah um but yeah so that's that's something that has absolutely nothing to do with this podcast lizard Um, king spiked in 1984 lizard king lizard king i mean these these ratios are also not even full percentages no i just like (laughs) charts let me enjoy my charts king king went down over time though huh yeah. Anarchy. Butt plug 2006 spike. Hmm. Wow. Interesting. Butt plug misspelt. No engrams. <laughs> <laughs> this is phenomenal podcasting, by the way. Oh, we yeah. Have spent, we have spent 10 minutes playing with grass. Just, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I mean, that's just, that is who he is. Honestly, though, um, I'm going to probably, po- I'm going to try, I'm going to make a note of posting this website, this search thing to the end of uh, our show notes. Uh, so you guys can play with, uh, oh, you can do, you can do comma separated phrases. Oh, Okay. Oh, cool. Um, I'm going to just throw this at the bottom of the show notes so I remember to actually include it Um, because this is fun. And I have the feeling that our podcast listeners are the types of people who would have fun playing with something like this for a little bit. (laughs) Oh, you can change your data set. You can? Yeah. yeah. So where there's the date range, it says choose from the corpus. And we're just choosing English 2012, but there's American English, British English. Chinese, English fiction, German, Spanish. Oh, ooh, that's fun. All right, well, I think I'm going to I'm going to say, Brandon, we need to kibosh the engram play at this oh, point. Oh, you mean talk about things people care about? No, 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 no. No one cares oh. about what we talk about. Oh, that's a, true. That's, that's a fact. That is a undeniable fact. And we cannot, in any way, shape, or form, uh, say anything else. It, no, no one cares. Um, remove that. Uh, do you want? I think you know what. I think we'll start a little bit earlier because this has a section in it that I think you and I are going to have some conversations about. Okay. <laughs> I'm very excited for this one. Uh. I don't know why I wrote this. Huh. All right. So, so I, I have a, I have a, a theoretical name for this episode, and I don't know why this is the theoretical name for it. Okay. But I think I'm going to keep it because I don't think I released the episode that this t- title was originally for. Um, so the first sighting of this particular instance, and it only is one instance was in 1977. All right. Its taxonomy is questionable. Uh, Oh, this is going to be a fun one. Some might say it's in the taxonomical group of Acrocepida. What's... Wait, let let me... Acrocepida. Speeda. S-P-E-D. Da, it's it's the group that jellyfish are under. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Oh, we're st- a sticky jelly boy. Um, or it might be an alien. Okay. Um, and this has nothing to do with anything about the the episode, but the title that I gave it, yeah, was it's called a warthog. Ah, has nothing to do with the episode. I don't know why I I, I named it that way whatsoever. No, I think clue. it's a puma. Um, yeah, 
Its region also is the USSR and Finland. Oh. Oh, boy. So, what do that's, you think this is? That's really interesting. When... There's some... Sometimes I wish I paid some kind of attention in history class. Um, well, also, sometimes I wish you would have paid some attention to the things I've said on this podcast. Like, I think we ac- I actually recorded what the name of this one is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This... It's the... The, 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 the Russian, the, oh, the, the, so, the, um, jellyfish, comrade. You, you, honestly, Brandon, you, if you don't know it, I'll, I'll just say it, because I, I can almost guarantee you can't even pronounce the name of this. I'm drawing a blank. Okay, so this is called the Jellyfish Anomaly. Oh, of I could have Petra- said that. <laughs> That's lazy. Of Petra Zavusk. Oh, no, we played um that zombie game for a long time. I can say... No, you... No. So we're actually going to... I actually made a note about that, and we're going to talk oh, about that in a second, you? too. Yes. Um, so Is there we... anybody in Cherno? That's all I want to know. Yes. There's always someone in Cherno. That's a stupid question. Mm-hmm. You know it's a stupid question. Petro is the better place to go. Petro is much better. Yeah. Also, I love. Oh man, I miss Daisy. It's not the yeah. same. I tried. I've tried playing again, and it's just not the same experience. Do you remember Ducky? I do remember Ducky. We murdered him in cold blood. Yeah. There's actually. I think that clip still exists on my Twitch channel. I miss Ducky. Yeah. Yeah. He he basically stream sniped us, except he didn't attack us. He just and wanted he, to be friends. He wanted to be friends, and then I don't remember which of us killed him. I don't know. This that feels like a me thing. It does, but we murdered him. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was like our only person who was watching our stream. Like, but in, he watched for a long time, and then he a spent really long time, a lot of time hunting us down. Yeah, because we didn't have our exact location. Like, he found us when we were like kind of in the woods by a road at some point. So, like, there was we were effort. Outs- we were outside of Petro. We were outside yeah. of Petro. But, he, um, like, that's an effort to, like, especially in that game, to, like... Oh, no, no. Go somewhere. Yeah, especially especially if it's nighttime. Yeah. And you're just starting. Like, if you're starting with a brand new kit. But, anywho. Um, so, before I begin, I want to point out two primary sources that I used. Um, and, actually, I left one out because I found it after I wrote this sentence. Uh... So, primary sources for this episode will be a Moscow Times article written by Matthew Bodner in 2016, Little Green Men, a look at the official Soviet X-Files investigation, and a Skeptical Inquirer article written by Yuli Platov and Boris Sokolov, I have no idea if I pronounced those names right, in 2000, a history of state UFO research in USSR. Uh, Additionally, I found a... um, uh, I found a <clears throat> document written in Russian that I Google translated. So it's not a hundred percent, but it's very important to the context of the story called preliminary analysis of the phenomenon of September 20th, 1997, according to data as of September 30th, 19, 19, not 1977, not 1997. Uh, for some reason it's written as 1997. It's 1977. Um, and that was written by a man by the name of, I don't remember it because I forgot to write it down, even though I mentioned it in the episode. So we'll, we'll call him out when, when we reach that bit. Um, really, really well-written research document, given the way that it's written, but we'll talk about that as well. So, September 20th, 1977. Petra Zavusk, Russia. And I've seen it spelt multiple ways. I just went with the one that I've seen the most common. Like, like the one that if I, it auto-corrected to. Okay. So, and the one that's on the Google map image in front of you right now. Um, so, Petra Zavusk is in eastern uh, Russia. 
or at the time Eastern Soviet Union. Um, it's a hop skipping away from Finland. Uh, you can see St. Petersburg on the map is like basically between. So basically, you can draw a line from Petrozovsk, Petrozovsk to Helsinki. And if at some point you take a right turn, you'll end up in St. Petersburg. Okay. So it's pretty. Uh, wow, I said Eastern, didn't I? Yeah, you meant yeah, West. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Siberia. I meant West. Yeah, Western Russia. They're, they're two totally different directions. I see, I meant West. Yeah. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, that kind of sets the stage. Uh, just Google the name of the this, and it should pop up a mm -hmm. map for you guys, uh, just so you can know where this is happening. So, as with all good UFO stories, this one starts at that magical time when it's simultaneously too early and too late. A group of dock workers were on the early morning shift at 4 a.m. Nice. on Lake Onega, located near Petrozavusk. And now I looked it up. This is not related to Petro and Daisy. I checked. I checked. I checked. It's based. Oh. Daisy's Petro is based off of a region in like Hungary or something. It's, it's oh. not. It's not based out of Russia. Uh, additionally, if you look at the map, its location's wrong. And I have the map for. I have the map for Daisy burned into my brain. Oh yes, as uh, <laughs> I think a lot of people. Because, uh, yeah, most of the time we died, though, it wasn't because of other players. It's because you let me drive. Yeah, <laughs> that's totally fair. It's, the, it's, uh, also, I'm going to go on. I like the Arma mod better than the actual release. Oh, it was much better. The Arma mod was so much better. It was so much more fun. Yeah. Um, the I actual release is garbage. Miss being sweating my being very sweaty because it was in the summer when that game kicked off. Yeah. And be like, where are you? It's like, I don't know about P, backwards R, something that looks like a table, just like reading off signs. <laughs> yep. That was fun. Uh, I, I will say, though, that uh, when PUBG released, that was super great because it, yes. it scratched the Daisy itch. Yes, it did. In a way that was perfect. Um, in a way that none of the other uh, Battle Royales have. To yeah. be totally honest, like I don't know. There's something very refreshing about the way PUBG handled it. I, I tried Apex Legends. I tried Fortnite. They just were not the same. Mm -mm. And now, now PUBG's kind of gone. Oh, they they went. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they were bought by a Chinese company, and now it's all skins. Oh, uh, yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Although I will say. Um, I still wish I had gotten the battle royale skirt. Ah, oh, I was yeah. I was trying. That would have been the only way for me to change out of uh, underwear and no t-shirt. I just like being weird sticky boys running around. Oh no! It, that was the most fun. Like just... nothing but a face mask. Oh yes, yes, that was fun. Yeah. Brandon, there, I still remember the first time you got a kill using a pan, and it was just phenomenal it was the <laughs> it was hands down one of the funniest moments ever because we were outside of a, we were like by telephone lines or something uh -huh. and i'm like brandon brandon there's a guy over there don't go over there i'm going after him and you beat <laughs> him to death with a pan and i think he yeah. had a gun he did was i don't know if it was that time or just something dumb that i did sometimes after that where I'd see somebody take off all my clothes and just stalk them with a pan, but I'd be like, dun, 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 and, like, run and hide behind stuff, and they'd, you'd clearly see them start, run, like, spinning around looking, because I'd do it in global. i just do well, global. <laughs> I think you did that, I, I think you did that when you played alone more frequently. Oh, yeah. In all honesty. Because that um, doesn't really help the group. <laughs> no. <laughs> if anything, it actively harms the group. Yeah, that's <laughs> I do want to try the uh, Call of Duty Warzone one. That mm -hmm. kind of looks fun, but at the same time, it's weird because they have this like whole gulag concept where if you die, someone else who dies gets put into a quote-unquote gulag, and you have a what? fight, and then you can respawn. I, I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, I like the simplicity of PUBG. That's mm -hmm. all I'm going to say. 
Although I never won a single player round. Really? Never. Never. I Ever. never won a single player round. You never got I the chicken won, dinner? I never got the chicken dinner by myself. I have won huh. uh, as a team a few times. Yeah. I've won as a team a lot of times. And most of the times when I won as a team, it was because of me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but multi like single player, I could not win for the life of me. I don't know huh. what it was. I really don't. Um, but I will say, I will say, I uh, every time I played that game, despite wearing antiperspirant, I would have a soak shirt at the end of the match. The stress was real. Oh, it was very real. Every single time. Every single time. Anywho, this has literally nothing to do with the Jellyfish Anomaly. It's just Petro-inspired memories. Um, so, as they were doing whatever dock workers doing on a Russian lake, and I'm assuming it's wrestling bears shirtless. I think so. Right, because I think I think that's just what workers in Russia do in general. Um, Probably, especially at four a.m. Right. Yeah. Like. Uh, anywho, a, a light emerged from the direction of the lake. The light was described as being in the shape of a glimmering jellyfish. The entity eventually stopped moving, and the beams of light emerged from it. These tendrils of light were even described as being similar to the downfall of rain. Huh. Naturally, the no the dock workers were concerned they had just worked. witnessed the ongoing Cold War become a hot one, <laughs> as the jellyfish shape was similar to a nuclear blast mushroom cloud. Uh, however, this shape persisted for 12 minutes before changing shape to a semicircular disk of light and quickly went in the direction of the lake before veering upwards and punching a red hole into the clouds. Nice. Um... The hole lasted for 10 to 12 minutes after the disappearance of the entity, according to eyewitnesses. Uh, oh. I got a picture there of it. It's a sky it, butthole. It kind of looks like a sky butthole. It kind of yeah. does, and it kind of looks like there's like little tiny hairs coming out of it. Yeah. It's uh, Goatsy in the Sky with Diamonds. Goatsy in the Sky. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I ruined the Beatles. <laughs> you didn't ruin the Beatles for me. Don't worry about that. Oh, I, I was. I never. I'm gonna say something controversial. Yeah, I'm gonna say something controversial. I never really liked the Beatles. Even Sergeant Pepper's. Just never really. They never really clicked for me. Huh. It just doesn't click for me. I don't know. It's. Just, what about I'm the Walrus? That ah, doesn't it doesn't do it. I'm a ska boy. Yeah, you are. I'm a, bad a person. dirty, dirty ska boy. Also, weeb shit. Also, weeb shit. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, man, I still remember the last Streetlight Manifesto concert I went to because it was the beginning of the end tour, and it was at. A place that used to be called Northern Lights, but they changed it because they were trying to go legit, and they didn't want to be named after a strain of weed anymore. Huh. Um, I don't remember what the name of them are is now, but they were they were an interesting venue. Uh huh. And street, I might have told this story on the podcast before. I don't remember. Street Light Manifesto was playing uh, something from. I don't remember. I don't even remember which album they were playing from, um, but they were playing something, and all of a sudden they stopped, and I was very confused. Turns out somebody had taken a bite out of somebody else. <laughs> Toke, the lead singer of Streetlight Manifesto, and the guy behind Botar and Toke, um, he he stops playing, and he's like, "Yeah, don't bite someone at a Streetlight Manifesto concert." <laughs> Which is fair. You yeah, don't that's bite a good someone rule. at a, man a streetlight manifesto. That's con. a good you don't, rule. Just don't bite people in general. Um, but anywho, so among the witnesses, there were policemen. <laughs> Sweet segue. Yeah, uh, sailors, an ambulance crew, which I thought was kind of weird, and a reporter, which somehow for me is even weirder than the ambulance crew, because remember, this is four a.m. in the morning. 
on September yeah. 20th. The news doesn't sleep, John. It slept. The news doesn't it, sleep. It, it slept in 1977. It did. Fair. It did. This is before Fox News kind of ruined everything. Or was it CNN? I don't know. They both are terrible. Whatever. Uh, so three days later, the Russian news agency, TASS, uh, reporter filed his story with the headline, A Strange Natural Phenomenon Over Karelia. Um, Karelia is just a part of the region. Karelia so. sounds like it would be a place in Star Trek. It does. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, a lot of places in Russia sound like they would be a place in Star Trek, too. That's fair. I mean, uh, what's his name? Who was the creator of Star Trek? Gene Roddenberry? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure he was a socialist. Maybe. Well, he's t- his his whole Ooh. the whole. S- Gene Roddenberry, a socialist. Well, the whole the whole premise of um it is basically socialism. Yeah, but it's supposed to be like a good, happy, like utopian place. Yeah. Yeah, so you can't get there without the whole socialism part. <laughs> oh no, you can't. You you literally physically can't. You I'm gonna tip my, my political hand here. I think it's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's literally impossible to have a utopia with capitalism. But Gene Roddenberry, uh was into the Chinese uh, communism model. Yep, that's that's actually fully believable. So that's based like on... way past. Well, that's authoritarian. <laughs> that's authoritarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, based on timelines, he might be into more of the idea of it than because, like, Bernie Sanders was also interested in the Russian model of socialism, but that doesn't mean he necessarily supported its implementation. Yeah, like the, the idea, the ideological versus the practicality. Like, yes. Yeah. I, I think, I think that's a key factor when we talk about people who are socialists. He flew um, in 89 combat missions. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, He's and that would the be the U S army air Corps. When when was he in the Air Corps? Was that Korea, probably, based on his age? I don't know. He was born in 1921. Uh, that would be Korea, most likely. Most likely huh. Korea. Most likely. Um, yeah. Because he would be... Although 20, he could technically... Mm, when, when was it? 21, you said he was born? That's when he was born, yeah. So he'd be 19 in 1940. So hypothetically, it could have been World War II. Huh. I don't know. Uh, anywho. This has literally nothing to do with the story once again. Um, There's a drink named after him that's made of a blend of 100% organic agave juice, lime juice, and gluten-free alcohol base and carbonated seltzer. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know what that has to do with the jellyfish anomaly of Petrovis. I don't know what that has really to do with Gene Roddenberry. Because I was looking at Gene Roddenberry facts, and so it went from like, here's when he was born, he served, here's a drink you can make with agave juice. Yeah. I mean, I think I think discussing the Arnold Palmer has more impact on discussing Arnold Palmer. Um, Fun but I fact don't... about Arnold Palmer's. I didn't know I needed glasses until uh, I was in my 20s. And I thought Arnold Palmer, I didn't know he was a golfer. So I thought uh, Arnold Palmer was what you named a drink that was a mix of iced tea and lemonade. And that the Arizona Arnold Palmer flavored drink had a picture of George H.W. Bush on it. Well, an Arnold Palmer is what you name a mix of a iced tea and lemonade. However, <laughs> I, for a very long time, before I wore glasses, very, like, legitimately thought it was a picture of George H.W. Bush on the Arizona Arnold Palmer uh, I mean, bottles. it looks like him. It looks like him. I, I, he looks similar. I'm not going to deny that, but fuck. Um, 
Any. I thought it was a weird choice, but I still loved the drink. It would be an extremely weird choice. <laughs> so, despite a, no- a fair number of witnesses, uh, the witness entity was not detected by the nearby Petros. You know, you I was doing it. really good. No, I was. I had the pronunciation guide up there. You saw it. I did. Pet- Petros Vusk. Uh, the Petrovsk Hydrometeorological Observatory, as reported by TASS. Effectively, this means outside of visual witnesses, no instrumental data can back up this paranormal event. By all accounts at this point in the story, the Petro- Petrovsk incident is a genuine UFO. Although that doesn't necessarily mean it's alien or paranormal, because I want to point out UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Object. If you see a balloon in the air and you can't identify it as a balloon, that is an unidentified flying object. If you see a bird in the air and you don't know what a bird is, that is a unidentified flying object. And you should probably learn what a bird is. No, it's a government drone. Birds aren't real. Birds are definitely real. Government Birds drones aren't real. Brandon, Brandon, right now, I don't want to talk about government drones because there's a literal predator drone circling a city in the continental United States right now. So maybe let's not, <laughs> let's, let's not go down the conspiracy hole. Yes. I know birds aren't real.com. Birds aren't real. Uh, who came up with this? It's it, so what is, it was a college student. So the it's a fake conspiracy. And the whole point is it makes fun of um, QAnon. So it's like a crazy conspiracy theory that's made up to make fun of people who believe in crazy conspiracy theories. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, also, it's a, I want to... It's a satirical thing. <laughs> this is a fun... History speaks for itself. We need a way of keeping an eye on American citizens without knowing them. It was imperative for their own safety, of course. We hired the best. It took years. We designed, built, tested, failed. We persisted. Eventually, over the decades, we had it. A fleet of covert technological surveillance devices, unlike anything the world had ever seen. We called them birds. Richard yeah. Nixon, 1978. <laughs> yeah, well, the whole idea is, like, the government killed off something like 12 million birds and replaced them with uh, security drones that look like birds to spy on the American people. <laughs> I clicked the history. I clicked the history, Brandon. Yeah. And the picture is the, the presidential turkey pardon. Um, and it says robot bird prototype around its <laughs> neck. <laughs> <laughs> There's some really good pictures on this site. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Although I think that this is one of those things that kind of came around, uh, it, it like was a joke, but it's one of those things that people who don't have the ability to detect satire thought was real. Uh, it's entirely. Po- I think it was a tweet that some guy made, and then it took off because I think that it was a reply to someone saying some crazy like conspiracy about something, whatever. And then he's just yeah. like, you know what, birds aren't real. Like, like, what you're well, saying I, is as logical as birds aren't real. And then that exploded, and then they built this around that. Yeah, I mean, the real scary thing to me is I can't tell if it's a joke in some cases or if people really believe that birds are 5G-controlled beings. Um, um, People probably believe that. Yeah, and that's that's really depressing for me, and I don't really want to walk down that path anymore. Anywho. I've also been seeing people posting stuff like I can't believe this, like, like what, what, like, what, just, just being like, uh, like, a bach is that a thing at some video, but then, and it's from like a news story, but then in the background it's um, the onion logo. Oh yeah, no, no. I've seen that a few times of just people sharing things, and then I'm just like. That's the onion. And also, there's crazier stuff that's actually happening in actual life. Yeah, there's, like, like more insane thing. Brandon, there's a... F- <sighs> <laughs> I'm 
I'm not going to get into it. I'm not going to get into it. We Birds talk about, aren't real. We got to talk about sky jellyfish. Sky so, jellyfish. Incidentally, the reported sky jellyfish was not the only thing that happened that night. Across northern Europe, sightings of a collection of UFOs had occurred around the same time, with the farthest occurring in... Oh, I forgot to write the pronunciation guide for this one. Ha ha. Uh, Sandokul, Finland. You know, I'd, t- I'd buy it. Sandokul. I think that's right. I think that's it. If you just said uh, it smoothly, I would like people would be like, oh, he knows it. Yeah. In Helsinki, the phenomena was observed as a brightly luminous body of a spherical shape, which left a smoky trail. In a Google Translated document, the event was described as having a flight time of four hours. It's a long time. Yeah. Although reports conflicted slightly on the object's direction, which appears to be mostly northeast. Um, This tracks with the narrative being formed of an object moving in the Earth's atmosphere towards Petrozovsk, because that was northeast of uh, Mm. Helsinki. Um, Or at least, if we're thinking about this, that narrative can emerge naturally just because these two events are yeah. happening. Although the problem with that is they happen at the same time, but we'll get into that in more detail. Petrova, Pe- Petrova, th- th- this, this, <sighs> the joke's not going to land now. Cause I got the word out wrong. <sighs> I was going to talk about the supply of beans. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The joke failed. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes the failed jokes are the best jokes though. That's true. That one didn't make that didn't go that didn't circle around the not funny enough to become funny eventually. I did the same mm-hmm. thing to my wife. I said something, and she just looks at me and she's like, "No, Brandon, that didn't. That wasn't. No." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like I tried to say a joke and just got just stripped. Just no. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's it. We're yeah. done. We're done. That was too bad. You know, that's my kind of humor is to like that kind where like it's so bad it circles all the way back around. Oh but no, yeah. No, it's I've no, just been yeah. failing hard the it, last couple of days. I call it the black sheep effect. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, the flight pattern of the object becomes a little stranger over Leningrad, where it travels east, pauses, and then moves north once again, maintaining visibility for four hours. An interesting deviation occurs near Letha, Letha, where three objects were observed sequentially as star-shaped objects, each with its own trail. Interestingly, despite the wide range of sightings, the object was only ever detected on instrumentation over Helsinki by the aerodrome locator of the Helsinki airport. Additional research sa- stations were investigating the report. However, no unusual re- readings, save an aurora recorded at Letha, were indicated elsewhere. So there's literally only one ping, radar ping, effectively, for this everywhere. Anywhere. Um, Despite this whole thing going down. Huh. So, uh, red flag. Yeah. That's a, like, (sighs) So the problem is a sample size of one doesn't, it just doesn't. So, but at the same time, Brandon, like people saw it. So multiple people saw it in multiple locations. I saw a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of stuff too. And I don't believe most of the stuff I see. There was one time I had a fever so bad that the world started getting larger around me and smaller simultaneously. It was weird. Oh. I, I was like viewing f- fourth dimensional space. I had like a fever of like 107 or something. Gah! I nearly died. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I nearly died. I had the flu so bad I nearly died. Um, 107. It was like 107, 106. What's the point where your brain dies? Uh, There. I think 103 was the worst I ever had. Uh. Oh, which by the way, when they when they took my temperature um, at work yesterday, the, the uh, guy went, took it and he went, huh? And they took it again and he goes, huh? And he goes, you have your heat on in there? And I was like, oh, do I have a fever? And they took it again and he's like, it went boop. And he's like, are right, you going? And I was like, what was it? Because you acted weird. And he was like, 
Well, it said you had a fever hunt of 103, but you look like you're doing a lot better than that, so I figured it was a mistake. And I was like, fair. Uh, it was 105, it wasn't 107. 107.6 is basically the brain damage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I started going in, like, loopy at that temperature. Um, it's scary. And, uh... I wouldn't be surprised there were a lot of things in our history that were caused by an untreated fever that went a little bit too high. But we leave that alone. <laughs> so luckily, due to the existence of an official report on the phenomena compiled by, and this is the name, I, I wrote it, I knew I wrote it, Lev Gindilis, we have a collection of reasonable hypotheses. It should be noted that this report was generated in response to a, a, a set of concern raised by local authorities and what appears to be a legitimate lack of knowledge on the part of the Soviet Union as to the origin of the events. Uh, I say that because they actually started a commission to investigate it after the fact, and we'll get into that. And usually, uh, a state like the Soviet Union would just squash the evidence if they thought, if they knew what was going on. Um... Huh. So, anywho, the report posits one of three possibilities, or it, it posits three possibilities, doesn't actually arrive on a, any one of them. The consecutive flight of one object through observation points, the flight of one object over the specified area or near it at a sufficiently high altitude, ensuring simultaneously observations at all points, the passage of several objects of the same type at approximately the same time, accurate to several minutes. The report outright disregards the first hypothesis as it would undermine the fact that the site occurred simultaneously in multiple disjoint regions, which honestly is fair. Totally fair. Because uh, if you saw it in Helsinki, Leningrad, Lekka, and Petrosovsk at the same time, weird shit would be happening temporally. The thing huh. would be moving so fast uh, that that makes literally no sense. Because uh, it temporally doesn't make sense. It, like, would break the laws of temporality. So unless it's it's some fourth dimensional plane or something or whatever. Nah. Yeah. Um, the second hypothesis would require the object to be traveling at 100 kilometers in the Earth's atmosphere and have a diameter of at least one kilometer. It's pretty big. Yeah, that's fairly large. Also, the speed makes more... Because that's pretty slow, 100 kilometers an hour or whatever. So... That makes the four hours make more sense. Because in my head, I was trying to figure out, like, how well, can something well, no, be in no, such no, a no. small area for four hours? It's not traveling at 100 kilometers an hour. It's 100 kilometers in the Earth's atmosphere. Oh, that's not that high. That Well, it's the Karman line. That's the boundary b between um, Earth and space. Is that it? I feel like 100 kilometers in my head isn't as that. It totally is. It totally is, Brandon. Huh. Um, just just look at it. Go to Wikipedia, Carmen Line. Uh, the it it's in the thermosphere. It's where auroras happen. Huh. Um, yeah, hundred kilometers is the the cutoff. The space station is is like above that, but it's only at like five hundred kilometers or something like that. See, my my judgment of distance was because I know about in my car, like when I'm driving, because it shows tells you both in miles per hour and kilometers. That's the smaller number on the inside. Mm -hmm. It's not that fast. So I was thinking, like, I've driven an hour before, and I was trying to think that, but up. Yeah, no, that's, it's... That's, like, 55, 60 miles an hour. Yeah, no, that's right. it's it's not that high, really, at all, at the end of the day. Um, huh. I mean, you'll never... In your lifetime, Brandon, it's unlikely you'll ever reach that height. I mean, if all goes well, I'll just never reach that height. I mean, I want to, but I'm a different type of person. Yeah, I don't want to. I, I, I'm I'm a totally different type of person. I also want to replace my body with entirely cybernetic implants. Oh, I want it. Yeah, we're on the same page with that one, buddy. That oh, yeah. One. No, I, I want oh. to go full. I, I will go full Ghost in the Shell five, uh, cyber. I don't care about the moral implications. I uh -huh. just want to be an immortal cyborg. I'd fucking take over the world. Probably. That'd be my thing. I'd build myself a Gundam body. 10,000 ladders. <clears throat> Sorry. 10,000 ladders? 
That's how that's how far away space is. You need to stack ten thousand ladders on top of each other. Oh, that reminds me of that South Park episode. Ugh. I haven't watched South Park since twenty sixteen. I have I can't remember the last time I watched South Park. I don't know. I, I know the last time I watched South Park because I literally was like, Oh, South Park is responsible for be- people being uncaring assholes. Maybe. I still like the games. They're funny. The the first one has that really funny shrunk it down scene, but I won't go into it anymore. You know the one. No. You didn't get there? I don't think so. I, I only watched South Park. Like, there's a brief window when I was really big into South Park. and then No, it's I in just... the game. It's in the game. Oh. Oh, yes. I did get there. I know exactly ba- what you're talking about. The bedroom about. scene. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's Hold a little... fun one. Uh. It, there, there's a there's a monstrous pair of testicles. That's all I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. Um, so there exists some issues with this secondary hypothesis, which is it traveling at the Carmen line, um, which the report itself draws attention to. I was so happy when I found this report because I didn't have to do any debunk work. I just could use the report. It was great. I was so happy. <laughs> uh, first and foremost, the hypothesis fails to account for Letha, in which three discrete objects had been sighted. The altitude of the object also appeared to be inconsistent in multiple locations, meaning that the necessary height could not be guaranteed. Additionally, remember, we got the ping in Helsinki, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Which would contradict the fact that it had been simultaneously in Helsinki in Petrosovsk. Wow, I butchered that. Petrosovsk. Um, Petrosovsk. Petra Zavusk. I think the funniest thing of this episode is me trying to pronounce that word. We should do um, more Russian things. We should. Uh, actually, uh, there might be another Russian episode that comes out of this one. Oh, nice. But, yeah. Um, the preferred hypothesis of the report is that three separate objects were viewed in Helsinki, Leningrad, and Petro In Petro. Uh <laughs> Performed the described actions and traveled to the Letha region where they were finally sighted before disappearing. Unfortunately, the report offers no explanation of what the objects could be and recommended further study. Yeah, but how does three objects come off as one radar ping? Uh, it it only pinged in Helsinki. Oh, uh, I gotcha. And then the two other locations, it wasn't picked up by instrumentation, would be the idea. Um... As a brief aside, as someone who has read his share of research papers and recently has been reading a lot of them for reasons that I can't disclose yet, uh, this is some good science. Uh, They merely report the data, hypothesize on what it means, and ask for further study. This is a really good preliminary report on something. Bed science. I just remembered one time we had bees in our anechoic chamber. In your what? That was pretty funny. Anechoic chamber. Anechoic? Is that the, the sound chamber? Yes. Yeah. Where it, it like it, the, the, you should you just shouldn't have bees. Did they like go insane? I mean, maybe. Cause like that would probably drive them insane. Like the uh, the whole funny thing, like it's it's, me- it's to accurately measure sound, so it's it's a soundproof chamber. So the yeah. idea is that we're trying to me- like someone would be trying to measure sound in a chamber that was actually making sound because it was full of bees. <laughs> And then maintenance sprayed pesticide, but the pesticide dissolved the uh, adhesive holding the soundproofy bits to the chamber. <laughs> <laughs> so were the bees placed there intentionally or accidentally? I don't know. It was like there couldn't be a better spot for bees to be. I mean, outside. That's the best spot for bees to be. That's a literal best. God damn it, John. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho... Uh, the Soviet investigation did continue. However, I personally could find no satisfying conclusions in the research. Uh, it does appear, however, that this effectively spawned what I consider to be the Soviet equivalent of Project Blue Book in 1978. Um, there were two research groups, Setka MO, which is the Ministry of Defense. Uh-huh. And MUFON. Re- no, no, no. MUFON's US and MUFON MUFON let Henry Zabrowski join just by paying a little bit of money, Brandon. 
Anybody can join MUFON for just paying a little bit of money. I know. That's my point. They have Anywho. their own Netflix show. Okay. <laughs> Let me just get over the, uh, the, the, the audible pain that I just experienced. Uh, so research of the paranormal. So Setka MO or the Ministry of Defense, their mission was research of the paranormal, atmospheric, and space phenomena and their influence on the operation of military technical equipment and personnel. Setka AS, the Academy of Sciences, was research of the physical nature and mechanisms of paranormal, atmospheric, and space phenomenon. The program would continue for a whopping 13 years Damn. researching UFO phenomena, which is a long time for a research program. For people who don't know how long research programs last, that's a big deal. Uh, like a really big deal. If you've ever worked with a government agency, 13 years is a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, mainly, well, I guess it may be, might be less in the Soviet era because, you know, there was less changeover of who was in power. You know what? Hmm. I'm beginning to think that I might've, uh, applied American bureaucracy on top of, uh, Soviet bureaucracy. <laughs> All right. Uh, but anyway, uh, based on based on that, the 13 years, for those of you who are not as up on history about when the collapse of the Soviet Union happened, that's about when they collapsed. Oh, uh, okay. That makes uh, sense. Yeah. So, you know, I can only assume they figured out aliens, and that's why they collapsed. Um, you know. Jokes. Ha. Jokes. Ha 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 ha. Um, so the research was classified because, quite frankly, the public doesn't understand the scientific method. And I mean, that's still true. No, no, no. That's my point. Uh, it might have resulted in the public believing the government believed in UFOs as aliens. Because uh... the public doesn't understand that the scientific method is to take up a hypothesis and explore it and then iterate on that hypothesis and explore it some more. So, yeah. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Naturally, the research followed three stipulations because when you get a grant, you better do what the grant holders tell you to do. Otherwise, you don't have a grant anymore. Uh, <laughs> the program's activities formally entered the classified uh, plan of defensive research. At the outset of research, there was an assumption that observed UFO phenomena was due to military activity and or research and development. And in the event of a verification of a wholly new phenomena, such as actual alien flight or technology, um, any knowledge gathered was first to be used by military applications, e.g. absence of a radar contrast, high maneuverability, etc. Honestly fairly reasonable set of stipulations for a research project like this. Um, even if I ethically agree in mythic military application stuff as an avowed pacifist, pacifist can't pronounce, except apply when applied to people who say Yankovic, which is an unforgivable sin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's death penalty right there. Yeah. Has Weird Al put out any new, uh, new stoop to do's yet? Uh, the most recent thing was a Portugal the Man cover, if my memory is correct. He doesn't okay. do he doesn't do studio albums anymore. Oh, okay, uh, he sort he, of does he, his own thing. He has he 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 got his bean and now he's just kind of doing his own thing. Well, yeah, he he finally finished his contract. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have the squeeze box, which is basically Weird Al's contract in a three hundred dollar box. Nice. <laughs> um, I love it. Does it's, he have a star on the Hollywood whatever of fame? He's Weird getting Yankovic. one. He's getting one. Fuck you. Ah, uh, he caught me. Okay. Fuck you. <laughs> Death penalty. <laughs> you think I'm joking? Um. You wait, is... you get the death penalty because of how you eat tacos. No, 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 no. You no. eat tacos like a monster. I eat tacos like a human who. I should put eats my sister tacos. on speaker. And let her describe to everybody how you eat tacos. You <laughs> lay a taco flat on a plate, 
like a hot open sandwich at a diner. That's not true. That's I completely eat, true. And then I you bring your the face taco. to the taco and eat it like a cat eating wet food. I only did that because I put too much taco meat on the taco. You're a monster. Respect your DM. <laughs> There's, oh, you know, that's that's actually, f- <laughs> fuck this true. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Weird Al is getting a Hollywood uh, star as well as Lin-Manuel Miranda. There's a video footage of oh, them nice. both hearing that they're getting it on Hamilton, the set of Reno 911. Uh, going to Disney Plus. In, is it? Uh, yeah. In what month is it? Uh, next month. So here's my main problem. It was going to get a theatrical release, and I think they dished out a bunch of cash to uh, put it on. I think theatrical releases are going to die, to be totally honest. Yeah, I mean, I, was, I, like, I think... Fair. I mean, I think, everyone now has big TVs. You can yeah. just sit on your couch. Like, I, I, I really think that the the state of the world right now accelerated the death of the movie theater. I think movie theaters are going to die. Yeah. I legitimately do. There's, there's, um, the only types of movie theaters that would reasonably exist are, um, the like, what's the Alamo Draft House type ones where you're yeah. going for a movie and a show, uh, a movie, a meal it, and a show. It, yeah, like a nice dinner. Yeah, that's. I literally think that that's the only way the movie theater model can persist, um, because, uh, just that's what I think. Yeah, well, uh, that's I, totally fair. Because it's it's too expensive to go to a movie theater to go just go to a movie theater anymore. Um, for five dollars, you can rent the movie and everyone in your house can watch it. Uh, yeah. For twenty five dollars, you can buy the movie and keep it, like I did Scoob, um, because I'm a Scooby Doo monster. Um, I didn't watch Scoob yet. I should do that. But yeah, for five dollars, you can rent a movie, and for the other, you know, fifteen dollars that you would have spent at the movie theater, you could have a steak and beer and not wear pants. Yes, for nothing. Like, 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 literally. Yeah, fifteen dollars is over, over the the amount. Because, like, what's a steak? Seven bucks, eight bucks, depending on the type yeah. of the cut you get. How much? You, well, you you get you get that like fancy schmancy steak sometimes. So. Yeah, I get some of that fancy steak sometimes. <sighs> so I I can't use you as a benchmark for. <laughs> for the cost of steak i am a steak monster and i'll just buy the cheapest steak yeah i like my fancy it's not that it's fancy it's that there's more work into like making sure it's humane like the guy does like a post like he like a post op on the the animals after they're slaughtered to make sure that anything that happened to them like there's no bruising or broken bones or anything that happened during the time the animal was alive yeah and yeah yeah and they also make sure, like, it can't have traveled, like, more than a certain distance or amount of time on a truck prior to being slaughtered and stuff like that. Like, they just make sure they're, they're all just little happy cows. That, I mean, it's, it, it's it, ethical. It's, that's, that is ethical consumption. I just can't afford ethical consumption right now. Because fair. It's ex- ethical consumption, I wish I could afford it more. Yeah. Full stop. That's I wish it. I could do that more with chicken. It's easier with steak than it is with chicken. Yeah. No, it super is. It super is. I don't think you can easily do ethical consumption with chicken today. Because Purdue kind of owns Fucked everything. It. Yeah. Yeah. They're bad. They're bad. They're just bad. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, like, there's not, not, not a lot of... Oh, here's the weirdest hippie fucking rent you're ever going to hear that nobody cares about. You can't... There's not enough variety in it in that anything that's ethically raised... They also don't use antibiotics where I feel you should treat a sick animal. Yes. Like, if something's sick, make it feel better. So there, like, There's no I, middle ground. There, there's yeah. no middle ground of people ethically treating the animals and also treating the animals. Yeah. Like, like I want like an animal to be treated well, but also if that shit's sick, give it medicine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's no middle ground. And I'm also that. pro-GMO. Oh, I'm also pro GMO. I think GMO will save the world. I think yeah. I'm I'm I am anti Monsanto, but I'm yeah. pro GMO. Very anti Monsanto. Very pro GMO. We we th- we took a real left turn talking about after talking about Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah, I, I don't even know how that happened. Remember Anywho, when he did that song about food? 
he did a lot of songs about food. He has an album mm-hmm. called The Food Album that's a compilation of those that's songs. The joke. He stopped doing songs about as many songs about food after he became a vegetarian, though. Oh, okay. He's a vegetarian now. Actually. Shaggy, vegetarian. Not anymore. Which uh, I actually am really, really upset about. I'm not going to lie. Because yeah. Casey Kasem was a vegetarian, and his he requested that Shaggy be a vegetarian as well. Mm-hmm. Um, after he became a vegetarian, and then after Casey Kasem died, they stopped doing it. Yeah, like they should have. Uh, yeah, they should have. Uh, Casey Kasem is Casey Kasem Shaggy, so whatever. Anywho, um, this episode's not about the rants we just went on, and it's also not about the Soviet UFO research phenomena. Uh, it's about sky jellyfish. Remember Sky that. Jellyfish! So I think we might go into the Soviet X-Files in a future episode because I think there's probably a lot of hay to make out of that. Oh, that's probably pretty fun. Yeah. Do you know anyone who knows Russian? Oh, wait. I Pro- do. Yeah, never mind. I do. I'm not asking them to, to do research for this podcast, though. Okay. I, I, they're... They will not understand the point of this podcast in the slightest. <laughs> One of them, one of them thinks that women should get pregnant and then uh, have an abortion, uh, because it's good for the body to get pregnant if they don't want a kid. Uh, no, it's let me let me say let me say outright that's false. Like, yeah, no, just, I'm trying to figure out in my head how how to like the oh, the weird path that. The, when, the that thought process. When take. I was told that, my jaw dropped. And I just literally couldn't comprehend what I was hearing. So, yeah. Um, anywho. <laughs> Long a pause. Yeah. I, I'm just remembering the moment. And it was a moment. I can tell you who it was later, but... Uh, Anywho, so what was this thing? <sighs> Honestly, I, I don't really know. <laughs> Explanations range from meteors and auroras to electron ele- electromagnetic phenomenon created by a satellite launch. And I don't think any other satellite launches in history have created electromagnetic ph- phenomena that results in like weird ho- sky hallucinations. Um, but my favorite, from the perspective of that it gives me joy is that the event was, in fact, a mass witness event of an atmospheric beast. I love this picture, by the way. It's uh, oh. amazing. Oh, Dolphins no, Dolphins no. and whales in the sky with a plane oh. in the... In, is that Saturn? I think so. I don't know. Uh, this was on... This picture was on the Cryptids Wiki for atmospheric beasts. Um, and its caption was, Artist Rendering of Atmospheric Beasts. There is a... That looks like an F... 15, I want to say, based on the nose cone and jet uh, propulsion. Yeah. Um, the 15 was the Tomcat, right? Uh, well, I don't know nicknames. Uh, no, it's not F 15. It's a F 16, maybe? F 14? F 14? It's an F 16. F 16. Um, so there's an F 16. There's. Uh, I don't think there's actually a F 14. Uh, also, uh, because we're talking about planes, I found out what the the A twelve in Elon Musk's son's name is. Yeah, it's referring to the A twelve spy plane, the predecessor to the SR seventy one. Okay. Which, if you're going to abuse your child, at least use the superior plane. Yeah, is that the one that that like it needs um. Oh, like it's not well balanced on the ground because the wheels are like in a straight line, so it needs these little stands to keep it from tipping over. I think the A twelve was like I, I think it was called like the like something dragon was its nickname. Uh. Uh no no I'm thinking no of it's not one. that's not it you're thinking of a different one yeah yeah because uh, the A twelve uh, the A twelve. The CIA A12 ox cart had uh, real wheels. Um, yeah. Uh, it's Even though it says that it moved faster, the 
in practice, the SR-71 probably did more. And the yeah. SR-71 was actually used, and it was a spy plane. Uh, it's the cool. It's a cool plane. Okay. Huh. It didn't kill the SR-70. The reason I like the SR-71 is because the SR-71 is not directly responsible for the death of anyone. I was thinking of the U-2 uh, plane. Uh, the Lockheed the U-2. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like the B-2A Spirit's design, but I don't like its application. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's wing. fair with most military aircraft. <laughs> that's true. Uh, <laughs> I, I, that's also one of the reasons why I like the SR-71 so much, because it's just a spy plane. It was used to take high altitude uh, photography before satellites were a thing. Huh. Yeah. And it could, it could evade missile, like air, surface to air missiles yeah. really well. Uh, um, I like the Russian fighters. They got like way oh, stronger engines. Oh, the MiGs were wild. They, uh, yeah, well, even the new ones, they just did an air show where they can, um, because how they show off that their engines are like way stronger than any, like the US and uh, other places, like different, like places, like, like they're like, or like speed versus maneuverability or whatever. But these guys can just like stand, like hover on the ground with their nose pointing straight up, but be like so close to the ground. And the amount of power it takes to, uh, not fly because like you're that you, like when you're flying and stuff you're working more efficiently if you're just standing straight up and not oh moving, yeah no no it's like it's that, like that takes so much power and it's so inefficient <laughs> oh no that's that's a total that's a total they're BDA. just showing yeah, yeah. They, they just pull their dicks out and show everybody like look what we got and then yeah, yeah. Th that's literally what that is yeah. um yeah no the migs are phenomenally interesting planes i've always preferred the lockheed martins in terms of design, you know what? I used to want to be an aerospace engineer. There we go. That's why I know things about planes. Ah. Uh, I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> I'm not an aerospace engineer. I'm a computer scientist. That's it. Who plays way too many video games. Um, so I'm going to play along with this one because I really don't believe this at all. But I've been waiting for nearly 70 episodes to talk about this. Okay. The blurb on the cryptids wiki is absolutely amazing. Atmospheric beasts are the strangest flying monsters from ufology, cryptozoology, and astrobiology. According to eyewitness reports, <laughs> they are things that seem like living creatures, but break all the usual rules we apply to living things. They fly without the need for wings, and their bodies are only semi-solid, often partially invisible. The uh, now by eyewitnesses, do they mean people <laughs> taking mushrooms on the beach? I assume some ayahuasca is involved. Yeah. For those who believe atmospheric beasts are very fragile, light and lightweight creatures, who are either native to Earth or are aliens that came from elsewhere. If the latter view is taken, then atmospheric beasts are sometimes thought to have originated in the atmosphere of some other planet. But they can also be thought of as originated in interstellar gas clouds, so that they, so that they are in effect aliens without a native planet, able to swim through space. Now, Brandon, this is starting to sound an awful lot like a Star, a Star, a Star Trek plot. Uh, yeah, it sounds a lot. Well, there are actual Star Trek plots like this, and there's a one of my favorite Doctor Who episodes is about a space whale that they they built the city on. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. D spoiler alert: Does the whale die in that? I feel like the whale dies. Yeah, spoiler: The energy or the the city runs on the by torturing the sky whale. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. They just yeah, yeah. torture it. Yeah, it's permanently tortured, and that's didn't. I, if my memory is correct, the doctor got really mad about that. Yeah, my favorite episodes are when the doctor gets really mad. My mess is moving out of sun because my cat's under the desk pulling the wire. Um, <laughs> stop it, kid. I'm surprised none of my cats have come into the office yet. We're almost done, by the way. I'm just, this is just, this, this article is just too good to not read. Oh, I, yes. Um, believers generally consider atmospheric beasts to be non-sapient. So that even if these creatures did originate somewhere other than Earth, they still don't count as sapient extraterrestrials. They're just animals. 
Okay. In various... You know, this is reminding me that I, I heard of a different sky jellyfish. You did? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was on a beach. I'll have to try to think about it. Did I write All that right. down somewhere? While you think about that, in various eyewitness accounts, atmospheric beasts can usually change their density. Okay. Becoming smaller, harder masses that are usually metallic in color. Or they can become larger and cloud-like, even to the point of invisibility. In some reports, they may glow. Atmospheric beasts may roughly resemble whales and are sometimes called air whales or cloud beasts. Believers think that the atmospheric beast's normal habitat is high in the air, and they might die if they ever touch the ground. Is that the opposite of, like, deep sea fish that, like, can't survive at lower pressures or their bodies just explode? I think it's basically the opposite. Um, Atmospheric bees that resemble clouds may engage in behavior that is thought to be impossible for a real cloud. It's just squirting a stream of horizontal water at people through lips or being far too mobile and animate for witnesses to believe it was just a patch of fog. They're gooshing on people as they walk past. Supposedly. They're getting gooshed on by a, by a sky whale. Oh, Brandon, man. I, I want to tell you, I didn't read the entirety of this article when I copied and pasted it into here. Because you didn't I want, know about the gooshing? I, no, I wanted to experience it um, on air. <laughs> After I read the first sentence, I was just like, I need to. This, uh, this is too beautiful. I need to copy it wholesale. Um, the more solid kinds of atmospheric beasts may have mouths, eyes, flippers, and other features. But these body parts are generally arranged in a shape in a fashion that looks utterly alien, more like an ocean's invertebrate body plan than an animal we're used to seeing on a daily basis. Now, Brandon, uh huh. you may say, what about when they die? Don't worry, there's an explanation. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, yes. I was hoping there was. It is said when atmospheric beast dies, they fall to earth as gelatinous mass that may resemble a green, purple, gray, or iridescent jelly that evaporates into nothing within minutes, hours, or at the longest, a few days. Where's this jelly? That's a good question. Show me the jelly. (laughs) This is supposed to explain a type of anomalous event. You I can don't know. say that their bodies eva- just evaporate, and I believe, but don't tell me there's physically purple <laughs> jelly on the ground for days with no proof. Show me the jelly. I don't know. This is this is phenomenal. Show me the jelly. So this is supposed to explain an anomalous event, and I'm not sure if this is an actual thing. Okay, it's not an actual scientific event because I googled it and it's just star jelly. Um, Pooter Sayre that puzzled scientists for some time before they decided that Pooter Sayre did not exist. Pooter Sayre is Welsh for rot from the stars. This phenomena is also known as gelatinous meteorites or star jelly and reports of it come from around the world, not just from Wales. Gelatinous meteorites are not always connected with atmospheric beast theory. They are easier to find among collections of Fortania than inc- that include reports of many different odd things falling from the sky. My single favorite line, however, is re- from the related atmospheric jellyfish article. Yeah. NASA has also launched 60,000 jellyfish into Earth's orbit during their from undersea to outer space experiment. These produced atmospheric jellyfish may yield insight to the sighted atmospheric jellyfish. What? So what? What, that, what that is saying is artificial atmospheric jellyfish may yield insight to legitimate atmospheric jellyfish. Huh? It makes no goddamn sense whatsoever. So regardless, I can assure you, this is probably in the top 10 of dumbest ideas I've brought up on the show. And that yeah. includes me trying to get celebrities on the show. Like, this this is easily three. Easily the third dumbest idea on the show. Easily. Might be one, but I, I, 
I've said a lot of stupid stuff on this show, and I'm not confident that I haven't said something dumber. What? Yeah, so... Spaceborn jellyfish hate life... Spaceborn jellyfish hate life on Earth from popular science. What? Also, that from undersea to outer space thing, I don't think that ever... That's not a thing. I'm pretty sure that's not... I don't think it ever happened successfully. There's one PDF that is dubious at best, and it's a NASA.gov, but before the NASA.gov, there's other stuff. Um, well, no, no, no. So that's that's actually a subdomain, so it is a NASA.gov. Is it? Yes. This is, this is a... Uh, so ERJSC... Um, let me see. One sec. Uh, Software Robotics and Simulation Division of uh, NASA. So if you take away the the ERJSC, um, it takes uh, you to... See, the background part makes more sense. They didn't launch jellyfish into space. They looked at how other creatures are, like function in microgravity. Yes, that's what they did. They weren't That's, launching space like jellyfish into space tr- to see what happens. They weren't. Yeah, no. People people don't understand science at all. They weren't people, breeding space ocean. No, no. People literally don't understand at all. So whatever. And nobody feels bad for jellyfish. So that's probably. I'm sure they have another reason for choosing jellyfish, but um, well, nobody jellyfish, feels bad. Everyone for jellyfish. hates. Everyone hates jellyfish. Yeah. Like I don't think there's a. There's not a convincing argument in my mind that can be made for jellyfish yeah. being it was Medusa anything jellyfish other than... and a segmenting polyp. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So things everybody hates. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like sending mosquitoes into space, to be yeah. quite honest. Um so what it really was. Probably something known as a space jellyfish. Which is a normal vapor trail phenomena. And it was probably caused by the launch of the Cosmos 1955, nine, nine, the Cosmos 955, which happened at 1 a.m. that same night. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, fair. Also, space jellyfish look pretty cool. Oh, yeah, no, it's, that's a, that's a thing. Uh, the third one down, I copy pasted into the show notes. The Falcon um, 9? The Falcon 9, that was the one uh, from 2017 that everyone freaked out about because no one knew what it was. And it's, it could pretty much basically be the same thing. I'm disappointed and in fact, at how these don't look like space goatsy. No, well, uh, the, the one from the RS-12M Topol-M nuclear missile launch test from... That's more recent than I would hope to see a... Uh, that's more recent than I would hope to see a nuclear missile launch test from uh, Eurasia. Um, October 2013 does kind of look like a butthole. It's the fourth one down. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. I'm, it. I'm getting, I'm getting some butthole yeah. vibes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's probably just a satellite launch, and people are dumb. Yeah, I mean that that it's probably just this and people are dumb. It, it, they could that's probably a lot of things we're going to be talking about. Our 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 well is hitting Our well has our our bread and butter has always been people are dumb. But man is it getting more and more. <laughs> the longer we do the this podcast, the more it oh, becomes the the, the more we start stupid. scraping the uh the, the barrel the, of the, the edge of the ice cream box. Yeah. Oh my god. People are fucking stupid. Yeah. Myself included. I I want to preface that I'm a dumb person too. Yeah. Actually, let's figure. All right. I know we had this conversation before, and and me and Eric were having the same debate earlier. But it's okay. our, our um. So there's she has her books that she likes to read. Mm-hmm. And it's on an app on the phone called Choices. Now, they're choose-your-own-adventure books where you can make choices in the book. Is that a game? Yes. See, I say I just say it's a choose-your-own-adventure book, but it's on a phone. It's it's role-playing. It, it's literally number 19 but in role-playing. Is a choose-your-own-adventure book a game? And now, here's the thing. I will yes. concede. Actually, yes. 
it's <sighs> it's it is. Yes, See, it is. I disagree, but yield because now, because out of the two people talking, one of them is qualified to talk on the subject. Yes, I am. <laughs> so that is where I can see. <laughs> I am, I am specifically, uh, one of the most qualified people in the world to talk about this. <laughs> And if all things go well, I will be literally one of the most qualified people to talk about this in the world. I consider Choose Your Own Adventure books a game. And that's where I concede. Yes. because But I'm not happy about it, John. Here's the reason. I'll explain it to you, and I'll give you a really quick overview. This is a little bit of an extra bit of the podcast for everyone. Uh, When you're reading a Choose Your Own Adventure book, do you enter into a quote-unquote magic circle in which the rules are different? You might perform actions that you might not usually perform because you're reading a Choose Your Own Adventure book. Yes or no? True. Yes. Okay. Uh, when you're when you're reading the game, when you're reading the book, do you have an objective? Uh, yes. As the play, yeah. As oh, shit. You just said it. There we I go. I almost just said player character. Yep. yep. Shit. <laughs> yep. It's a role playing game with with less with, with more finite choices. That's all it is. It's it's literally D and D, but the the story you're you're in a D and D game that's being railroaded it's a by mud the DM. With, it's a mud with artwork. Yep. God damn it. Yep. Yep. It's if if that's here's the thing, if a choose your own adventure, uh, book is not a game, then what is Zork? <sighs> I got you. Yeah. I got you. Shit. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yep. The Brandon, I I have been reading research papers on the definition of games recently because I've been a little interested in pervasive games. Uh so like Humans vs Zombies, Pokemon Go, those types of games. Yeah. Um that is a game. There so, yeah. So you're gonna. Well, have I to... think, I'm pretty sure we've mentioned it before, but for people, or in case this is somehow your first episode and you're still listening, oh, almost an hour phenomenal. and a half into it, yeah. um, she's like you're like master's thesis, like you have a, a Googleable master's thesis, yes, on games. <laughs> yes, I have a Googleable master's thesis on game feel. Yeah, in which I designed a game with a, a cohort of individuals. I also have uh, papers dissecting the the level design of super metroid which i could release if people want it because i found them recently um let's see i have a paper that dissects the design of the quick select system in pokemon black and white uh a paper that dissects uh the reaper expansion of talisman and why i think it's the most phenomenal expansion to a board game ever and i have a paper that discusses the dash room from super metroid and why i think it is Hands down, one of the most clever pieces of level design in history. Um, so if you want to read any of those, just at me, and I'll provide them. Because, um, <laughs> you know, that's me. I've been working for IBM for five years, but I have a master's in game design development. <laughs> <laughs> it's useful for something. Well, actually useful for something else but i can't disclose anything about that yet (laughs) (laughs) like i literally can't disclose anything about it until maybe next week like legally speaking yeah which would be exciting (laughs) hopefully i mean yeah fingers and testicles crossed yeah we're oh hopefully not testicles crossed that's that's it's called portion it's it's pretty painful it's extremely painful (laughs) like you can die from it i think can you i think so oh gross Testicular torsion. Uh, I think Gavin Free has it. I think he had it fixed. He had it fixed, but he's not allowed to ride horses anymore. Yeah, true. Um, well, it can at very least kill your testicle. Uh, yeah. Gangrene may occur. Oh, okay. Yeah, it might become gangrenous if you don't treat it. Huh. So. But then again, a lot of infections can become gangrenous, so. Gangrenous. <laughs> the, the grossest mega evolution ever. Ugh. 
Who would it be the mega evolution of? Gengar. Gengar? Yeah. That doesn't really fit his whole palette. Gengar's? No. His whole his whole pastiche. That's not really his well, thing. That's, that's what happens if like a muck and a Gengar make love. I mean a muck muck Gengarus might be more interesting. Gengarus muck, yeah, yeah. Or a Garbodor. Or a Garbodor. Yep, yep. Anywho, I think we should end the episode. So Fair. as always, our website is cryptopedicast.com. Our Instagram is at cryptopedicast, as well as our Twitter. If you want to email us with ideas, cryptopediacast at gmail.com. Uh, we have a Patreon. We have four Jackalope level subscribers. I think it's your turn to say them, Brandon. I'm not sure. Uh, it might be, but they are Clay Sinclair, the great, the original Clay Sinclair. Um, then we got Marty Von Party, and uh, we we got Bird Schneider, who he's not doing so hot. Still need that. He still needs them bone bone bits. He does. He's got. His, his left leg, the best I can describe how it looks, three knees. He's got three knees. Three knees. Yeah. I kind of feel bad for Marty because now we're not, we're not like, we're not joking about his name, but his name's just so perfect. It's, it's perfect. And I really do hope it's a legal name. I like, wish that, that would be a phenomenal legal name. A Von Party. Uh, Andrew WK wishes his name was Von Party. That is very true. You know, it's true. Absolutely. Oh. What is Andrew WK up to right now? I'm not going to Google it. That's just a rhetorical question. We don't need to go into it. What's no, the Google, WK? Stop. Sorry, I don't understand. God. Oh. <laughs> Wilkes Keir is the WK. Always curious about that. Huh. Hyphenated last name. Hmm. Party, party, party. Party, party, party. party. Um, if you enjoy it, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe, all that stuff. If you have monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. I mean, look at episode twenty, uh, a- episode 68, right? Yeah. Time to go. Yeah. We did that one. That's probably the best, like, user-submitted episode. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's a, I, I think, I really think we peaked on that one. I think we peaked. I think yeah. it's all downhill from here. Yeah. It's all downhill. If you missed it, I, I, I mean... Well, you can go back and, yeah, just go back, listen to episode 68. It's in there. Yeah, yeah I th- I'm sure it's up there. I'm sure. Yep. Uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com, which auto-renew, forgot I ha- forgot to uh, pay for it, automatically drew that out. Um, oh, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, Brandon at cryptopedicast.com is my email. I wanted to renew it. I just forgot I had to, but then I also forgot I set it up for auto-pay, so I don't forget because I forgot once. I fixed it. Hey, my Twitter is at cryptobrandon. Uh, I'm Instagram at Mew2357. I haven't posted anything in a while. It's usually cats or Transformers. Let's just be real. Uh, Twitter is at JF Dunham. A lot of hot takes. I was up. I was up real early this morning when we're recording this, and I had a lot of feelings that did not go through the filter. Yeah, I saw when you were tweeting. I was like, "Ha! Huh, I bet he's gonna be sleepy. We might start late." And then open Twitter again, and he was like, seven minutes ago." And he was like, "Wait." Oh no, no. <laughs> I was in a, I was, uh, dog woke me up and I couldn't fall asleep because I got very angry about the current state and we are recording this on May 30th. Yeah. So if you want to know what was happening on May 30th, feel free to look it up. I'm not going to talk about it on this platform, uh, because I am the whitest white to ever white, but I was angry. Um, my website is johndunhamgames.com, and if you want to email me, john at cryptopediacast.com. Your DNA is 50% mayonnaise. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com, and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. I just watched John die inside a little bit. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Oh, did we talk I about Discord? Well ex- uh, no, we didn't. We have a Discord. Yeah. Um, we just recently opened it up for people like who are non-sponsors. There's still... So, the way our Discord works is if you are a patron, you get a special name on the Discord, a uh, special tag. Um, you get access to a... At Jackalope level, you get access to a special board, um, which I guess gives you more access to us technically but there's so few people on there we kind of just talk to everyone um 
if you're not a Patreon supporter, there is a Discord link that I will include in the show notes. Um, it's discord.me, Cryptopedia Cast, I think, if my memory is correct. Don't quote me on that. Look at, look at the link. Look at the show description. It's there. I promise you. Um, so if you want to join, feel free. Uh, we already have one person join from Twitter. Forget mm-hmm. their name off the top of my head. Um, but they also were the person who told me that the link was dead. So thanks for that. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to check it. Whoops. Um, but, yeah, so uh, we talk about a lot of stuff there. And there's also a Cursed Images channel that I frequently post links to. Um, yeah, what do we got? I'm looking at We got General. We got the Jackalopes only. We got Episode Discussion, Cryptids, Games, Cursed Images, Insane Movies, and Bots. Bots. Bots is... Bot, Discord bots is just so we can set up bots that can, like, automatically add people. Um, uh, oh, also, episode discussion is where one of our patrons told us we did something wrong. That oh, was Schneider. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Indeed. <laughs> There's some fun stuff in here. <laughs> what, are you just going through the cursed images? I'm going through Welcome. So uh-huh. welcome. So welcome has the the screenshot from the uh, the one video I watched, the movie I watched that has uh, the ghost on the road, and it's just a guy driving, and then a ghost turns, looks at him, and the guy looks at the ghost, and he's just like, ah! <laughs> "It's fun. It's fun." Mm-hmm. Why are you posting? Why are you posting in the Discord bot channel? I'm de- I'm deleting this. What? Because it's the bot channel. It's just a bop 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 bop. I'm deleting it. I'm deleting uh, it. It's going away. It's gone. I deleted it all. I have admin access. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. I'm going to pin whatever you post next. Oh. I was going to do a bunch of um, alt 016s, but Discord doesn't let you do that. Yeah, because they use... Uh, whatever. Anywho, um, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. Things are so far past the point of weird at this point. I am amazed if you're still listening. So, good on you. <laughs> bye. <laughs> you, you just say bye? <laughs> yeah, I said bye. No, whoa, okay. We don't usually say bye, but this time I said bye. <laughs> this is so weird we're saying bye now. All right. Bye. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>